I'm Steve Dale for the American College of Veterinary Internal Medicine. Dr. Heather Wilson, veterinary oncologist at Texas A&M University College of Veterinary Medicine. Dr. Wilson, lymphoma is something we know about because probably you know a family member, a friend, someone who's had lymphoma. We've heard the term anyway. It's something people get. It's something dogs get too. So tell me a little about it in dogs first off. Well, dogs, it's the most common malignancy of dogs. It represents about a quarter of all the cancer that we see in our, our canine patients. Um, mostly dogs get a large cell lymphoma. It's akin to this non-Hodgkin's type lymphoma that we see in people. And so it's an aggressive form. It's almost always uh, fatal. We generally consider it to be incurable, but it is treatable, and dogs do respond very well to chemotherapy treatments uh, for about a year or so on average. Okay, so, so because you said, I want to understand this, you said it's fatal, but it's treatable at the same time. So, so explain how you can say those two things sort of at once. Right. It's one of those diseases that we're probably not going to cure, uh, but we can get dogs into remission, which means there's no evidence of disease that you can see, uh, and they feel good, and they're, they're living a normal life, but ultimately they come out of remission, their lymphoma recurs, uh, and it becomes resistant to our drug therapies, and at that point, that's when it's unfortunately fatal. Historically, veterinary medicine, a lot of drug therapies that we use in veterinary medicine, it's from the human side, but now there's a little bit of everything going on all at once, sort of a cross exchange, and this cross exchange of knowledge, I think, happens on the cancer level as much as anywhere else, where human medicine is borrowing, actually from what we're learning in veterinary medicine, and you're working on some things concerning lymphoma that might help people we know, ultimately, with lymphoma that they might sometime get. Absolutely. I think uh, one of the important things to know about our, our canine, our, our patients that we deal with is these guys develop tumors for the same reason we do. Uh, and because they're living longer, we have better preventative medicine, better leash laws, things like that. They live long enough to get cancer just like we do. Um, they also have the same environmental exposures that we have. So for that reason, they develop tumors spontaneously just like people do. And right now, all the things we use to treat lymphoma in dogs are all human medicines um, that are, are the same medicines they use uh, uh, for people as well, just different doses, different schedules. So we generally um, will take these guys and treat them the way they would be treated if they were human uh, uh, and, and hopefully uh, can move forward with some new experimental therapies. First, for example, right now, we are doing a study with the MD Anderson Cancer Center, part of the University of Texas uh, uh, system. That group there is uh, very, very progressive in cancer research, kind of on the forefront. We're working with some pediatric oncologists, and they are trying to help us uh, develop a, a treatment for lymphoma where we teach the dog's own immune system to attack lymphoma. Uh, by doing this, we can create uh, immunologic memory, which means their immune system, just like if you've been vaccinated, your immune system remembers and helps you prevent getting disease. We hope to do the same thing by teaching their immune system to attack their own lymphoma. Now, how does that work? It's not like you standing in front of the dog saying, your immune system is going to teach you this. So, so how, without getting too technical, how does this work? It's, uh, it's actually a fairly simple process. Dog comes in with lymphoma, uh, and when we do our normal workup and diagnosis, we take a blood sample and we send it to the guys at MD Anderson. Those guys pull out a specific type of immune cell, uh, ones that are kind of the general of the immune system. They tell everybody else what to do, uh, and they teach those guys how to attack a lymphoma. They do that by giving them a special receptor, a receptor that already knows how to attack B-cell lymphomas. Uh, they grow them up, and then later on, we'll infuse them back into the dog. So the dog's getting their own T cells. It's not a, a new drug per se or toxicity, but it's their very own T cells infused right back to them about four to six weeks later. And just to be clear, I mean, the dogs get this lymphoma anyway. No one's giving them this lymphoma. And if the treatment were, this isn't a grand experiment. We know, you know, to, to some extent, what this is going to, what, what's going to happen, but you've got to show that it will. And, and by helping dogs, we can help people is the hope, I suspect. Absolutely. I mean, that dogs, the dog disease is very similar to what children get when they get lymphoma. They get bad disease, and, and it's a parallel thing. These dogs are developing lymphoma every day. Uh, these are not cases that, that we have created. These are dogs who come in to see us 
as a regular oncology patient. Uh, we're just hoping to take this to the extra level. Uh, we have concurrent trials going on in humans at exactly the same time, and, and we're learning, our human trials are learning from the dogs and vice versa. And so everybody benefits because everybody gets to learn a little bit more about science from each of the different uh, uh, species. Which is way cool, dogs helping people in other ways other than what we previously thought. I, I think that's terrific, and we're helping dogs as a result of that. Thank you very much. You can Thank learn you. more at acvim.org.